Huh? I can't go to the funeral? I'm going on a trip now. Besides, you haven't done much of wifey duties. And yet you were so selfish. My beloved mother passed away after a long battle with illness, and it was my husband who lectured me not to impose his own common sense on me when I contacted him about the funeral arrangements. It's unbelievable. I don't know anyone more unreasonable who prioritizes a trip over his family's misfortune. Neither I nor the stupid man knew, at the time, that things would turn out so horribly a few days later. My name's Sally, 32 years old, and I work at my parents' flower shop. Many different people visit the shop, and I feel a sense of fulfillment every day. For example, people who order a bouquet of roses with a slightly embarrassed look on their faces to propose to their lovers. People who come to get gardening advice because it's their hobby. And Linda, a regular customer, was one of them. She was a very bright and talkative person who always made our family laugh. A few years ago, when I was at work, Linda suddenly asked me, Are you dating anyone, Shelly? I was surprised by the sudden question from Linda, but my mother answered right away. I hope she meets someone nice. Michelle is shy, so... I couldn't help but blush. Although I had some dating experiences, I had never met anyone I could imagine marrying. However, my parents were probably worried about my future as an only child. Meanwhile, Linda, who found out I didn't have a boyfriend, said, Would you like to meet my son? That was how I met my husband, Edward. To be honest, I wasn't very excited at first, but as soon as I met him, my heart started beating. I was drawn to Edward's smiling face, which was like a blooming flower. He talked about his work, his friends, and his hobbies and traveling, and made me laugh a lot. We naturally became a couple and got married two years ago. I'm worried about mom, so is it okay if we live together? My husband, who had been living with Linda at his parents' house, asked me about living together. If Linda, my mother-in-law, had been a difficult person, I might have hesitated. But I liked her and we quickly decided to live together. I'm really happy that Shelly is becoming my daughter-in-law. Don't worry about the housework. Leave it to me. Shelly, just take care of your mother the most. I also felt like crying when Linda became a little tear-dyed. In fact, my mother had been in and out of the hospital after being diagnosed with cancer around that time. Her condition was not good and my father and I were running the store. My mother used to have a good figure, but she had lost a lot of weight since she got sick. I haven't been this skinny in how many years? <laughs> Although my mother was laughing, there were days when she was bedridden all day when her body was not feeling well. For my parents' sake, I did the housework in my parents' home on the second floor between my jobs. Honestly, I was so busy that I couldn't even take care of my in-laws. And I was completely dependent on my mother-in-law. I'm sorry, Linda. I haven't been able to do much for this house. As I bowed my head to my mother-in-law, she smiled and said, What are you saying? Don't worry about us, okay? Previously, my mother-in-law said, she regrets not being able to take care of her own parents. She always told me that. I was so grateful for having a mother-in-law like Linda. However, my husband Edward had a completely different attitude. I understand that your family is going through a tough time, but aren't you relying on too much of my mom? You got married. So think about which family should be prioritized. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. 
Sissy was true that I was relying on my mother in though. I couldn't strongly argue back. Moreover, when my husband saw me come back from my parents' house, he said, Shelly, prepare the dinner? Hurry? Soon after coming home, my husband began to demand that I do housework. He gave me various orders. But he lay on the sofa, laughing while watching TV. My mother in law who couldn't bear to see this go on, yelled, Edward, stop it already. Her family is going through a tough time. You know that. And yet, you come home and order her around like a slave? Who do you think you are? My husband was surprised and taken aback by the anger of my mother-in-law. What are you joking about? I'm married. Because I wanted you to have an easy life. I just thought it was natural for a daughter-in-law to prioritize her in-laws. My mother-in-law continued to scold my husband, who kept making excuses. You're just like your father. With no consideration for others. With his mother's words, my husband sulked and fell silent. My in-laws were divorced, and Edward's father seemed to have been quite a domineering husband. And my mother-in-law had a hard time with him. She laughed and told me that she was the one who asked for a divorce after her grandparents passed away. From that day on, my husband became more subdued. But he didn't like it when my mother-in-law supported me more than him. And our relationship as a married couple wasn't that great. Meanwhile, my mother's condition worsened and she was hospitalized. The doctor told us that her condition was quite serious. So if there was anyone we wanted to see her, we should call them. When I told my husband and mother-in-law, Linda cried and said, Shelly, your mother always listened to my boring stories with a smile. You must feel so lonely and frustrated. I tried not to cry too much, but my mother in those words made tears overflow. We embraced each other and cried together. My husband had the look on his face as if he had been left behind. Three weeks after that, my mother passed away. I had seen her suffer through hospitalizations and painful expressions. But in the end, she passed away as if falling asleep. Mom, you can finally rest now. I'm happy for you. My father and I shed tears while looking at my mother. My husband and mother in law had been informed in advance about my mother's critical condition. Please. Spend some time together as a family of three. Don't worry about us. Let us know if there is anything we can do. A few days later, my mother passed away. And I informed Linda about it, and she said, Let's say goodbye with a smile, okay? My father and I were truly grateful for her words. But the words that my husband Edward said were unbelievable. Oh, I can't attend a funeral? I'm going on a trip. Besides, you haven't done much of wifey duties. And yet, you were so selfish. My husband said that to me in a flat tone on the phone. Wait a minute. What trip? Are you serious here? My mom has been in critical condition. Haven't I told you that in advance, have I? My husband sighed at my words. Even if you say that, I applied for the trip six months ago. And it's too late to cancel now. Besides, it will be a waste of money. I became emotional at my husband's grumbling. You're saying that you would rather go on the trip than attend my mother's funeral? Think about it for a sec. It's totally inhuman. Shut up. I can't go anyway. Megan up? My husband hung up the phone after saying that. Neither my mother in law nor I had been informed about my husband's trouble plans. He probably thought that we would stop him from going if we found out. I later learned 
that he had been secretly packing his bags in his car to avoid suspicion on the day of departure. When I returned to my in-law's house and told my mother in law about the situation, her face turned red with anger. Even at the funeral, she continued to apologize to my relatives for her son's unreasonable behavior. Linda, please lift your head up. You did nothing wrong. You have always been kind to me, and my father and I are grateful. My mother also used to say that she was glad to have you as my mother in law. My father next to me also spoke to my mother in law. Shelly is right. We are truly grateful to you for making time for our family to spend together at the end. My mother in law kept crying. In the end, we said goodbye to my mom with a smile. I thought that from now on, I would do my best for my in law's house, as I had been relying on my mother in law so much. However, just three days after my mother passed away, something happened. As soon as I returned home from my parents' house to my in law's house, I noticed that something was wrong. It was already dark. But there was no light in the house, and it was quiet inside. When I entered the living room, I was surprised and let out a loud voice. But, Linda, Linda, I found my mother in law on the floor. Her body had already become cold. I panicked, but immediately called an ambulance. However, shortly after arriving at the hospital, the doctor told me that my mother-in-law had passed away. The cause of death was a heart attack. It was a sudden and unbelievable reality. I contacted my father and tried to call my husband, but couldn't get through. It wasn't until two days after my mother-in-law's death that I was able to reach my husband. Shelly, I'm sorry about your mom's funeral. Well, I'm tired. So, I want to rest at home soon. Are you resting too now? The funeral is over. He continued with a smirk, and I told him, We're about to attend the funeral. Ha, huh? it's been about five days since your mother passed away, right? Hearing my husband thought less words, I became emotional. It's your mother's. Linda's funeral. She had a heart attack two days ago, and passed away, while you were enjoying your trip like an idiot. In a raised voice, I hung up the phone, and sent the address of the funeral home to my husband's smartphone. The master of the ceremony was my mother-in-law's brother, my uncle. My husband arrived after the funeral was over. M mom Everyone looked at my husband with cold eyes as he arrived in a panic. He was wearing a brightly colored sweatshirt, in stark contrast to her black funeral attire. My uncle berated him for his inappropriate attire. Edward, why did you bother coming now? Shelly and Dunder had told me everything. Do you even realize how stupid you are? My husband's face turned pale as my uncle raged on. Edward, did you enjoy your trip? Shelly had to work in your place, even though she just lost her mothers. My husband responded defensively to my father. Oh, why didn't you tell me about something so important? What are you talking about? I coached you multiple times. You even turned off your phone, didn't you? Your boss and colleagues even came to my mother's wake. It turned out that my husband had told his company that he was going on a family trip. His insensitive actions and words made me feel really pathetic. Of course, my husband's colleagues and bosses came to Linda's wake as well. He fell to his knees and started crying loudly, but no one comforted him. Then I approached him with a certain determination. By the way, you know what I want the most right now. I want a divorce from you. I glared at him 
as he begged and cried. Why? Why divorce? I'll work hard. Without you, Shelly, I... Yeah, right. Without me? There won't be anyone to take care of your daily life, right? Wait. Are you kidding me? I refuse to live a life like that. I don't need you in my life. After I coldly and calmly said that, my husband didn't say anything back. After a while, our divorce was finalized, with my father accompanying me during the discussion. In the end, my husband completely turned around and said to me, You will regret living me. I'm going to be rich. I felt nothing but disgust towards my ex-husband who spoke as if he was taunting us. The husband who used to have a smile as beautiful as blooming flowers was no longer there. Moreover, to my surprise, he had quit his job. Or rather, he had no choice but to quit. After that incident, when he went to work, he received harsh, icy stares from his boss and colleagues. Unable to bear it, he apparently quit his job using a resignation agency a few days later. When I heard about it, I was disgusted by his dishonesty. I couldn't help but feel ashamed that he had once been my husband. Breaking up with him was truly the best decision. Several weeks after the divorce was finalized, my ex-husband ran into the store with a pale face and pleaded, Shelly, please help me. This can't be happening. As it turned out, on the day my mother passed away, my late mother in Nolinda had taken a certain action. She had changed the beneficiary of her life insurance to me with the intention of cutting ties with Edward, my ex-husband, who planned to support himself with the life insurance for the time being, was quite panicked after finding out about this. Yet, he thought he could manage somehow, as he still had the house. But the house had originally belonged to his uncle. Having lost his job and his house, my ex-husband boldly asked me for help. Hey, help me out, Shelly. Can you let me stay in this house for a while? This is all because you took the money that I was supposed to receive. You should take responsibility and support me. I retorted to my incoherent ex-husband with those words. I am deeply grateful for all the help your mother had given to me. But I have no gratitude towards you. Then my ex-husband turned bright red and tried to grab me. Edward, stop it already. Don't come any closer to my daughter. My father immediately appeared from the back of the store and pulled my ex-husband away. Then we heard the sound of a police car stopping in front of the store. My daughter's ex-husband is stalking her. Please, take this guy away, quickly. My father had reported Edward to the police as soon as he saw him. My agitated ex-husband's elbow hit the police officer's cheek, and he was taken away in. After that, my ex-husband's life followed a downward spiral. He apparently asked his relatives for help, but was rejected by all of them. It was a case of reaping what he sowed. I also issued a restraining order against him. Since that day, he hasn't appeared in front of me again. And then, I rented the empty store next to the shop and started a flower arrangement class. At first, most of the students were regular customers. But now, we have new students joining us, and we are enjoying it. My father was depressed for a while, but gradually regained his spirits and worked hard. My mother and mother in no Linda loved this shop, and I want to continue to protect it with my father. It hurts. I held my stomach and collapsed down to the floor from the chair. It all felt strange from the beginning. Ever since my husband offered me a brownie with a huge smile on his face, 
He had become increasingly indifferent to me after our marriage, but suddenly became very kind recently. Ignoring me laying on the floor, he left the house without calling an ambulance. If only I had realized this before it came to this. Just kidding. He is really a stupid man. Ha. Uh, I sighed and looked at the front door. In fact, I saw through all of my husband's plans and his silly acting. Humming a tune, I took up my cell phone and made a call. How dare you betray me? Now, it will be your turn to despair. Well, I guess you won't be able to get away with acting this time. The story goes back a little while. I am Paige, an ordinarily working housewife. I got married to Bryce, whom I met through work six years ago. I fell in love with his ability to work vigorously and his refreshing smile. However, although my husband is capable of working, he is easily influenced by others' opinions and often changes his mind when convinced. In short, my husband is a troublesome person. Since he does not participate in household chores, I mainly do them. Balancing work and housework is quite challenging, but I enjoy my busy days. I think I am enjoying our lives reasonably well. We do not have any children. I feel fulfilled in my current job and would be happy if we naturally have a child. My husband and his parents respected my feelings. We agreed to work together until the day a baby comes to our family, and we have been saving money ever since. We finally purchased our dream home last year, which allowed us to focus more on work. I am working hard to save money while repaying our housing loan, and at the same time, I have a side job that I don't often discuss with people. In my free time. I provide online counseling for people with problems. At first, my income was small, but as I gained experiences in counseling, the number of consultations gradually increased, which helped me save money. However, my husband seems to think that this is just his wife's whimsical way of earning pocket money. Even if you say you are making money. Is probably not that much anyway, right? Sometimes he says things that belittle it, but it's okay. I enjoy my side job because it makes me happy to help someone. Anyway, I had been living like that every day, but one day, I began to feel that something was off with my husband. It was around that time. When he suddenly became obsessed with feng shui, my husband, who had never been interested in feng shui before, started placing lucky charms all over the house, and walking around busily to rearrange furniture. We need to put a potted plant in this corner, and change the furniture placement. My husband began to say things like that. Crystals that predict the future, lucky cat figurines, and jars for good fortune started piling up. I felt something was unnatural about it, and asked my husband why he was doing it. Hey, you seem to be really into lucky charms lately.、Y、yeah, well, this just for fun, you know. Why all of a sudden? You never showed much interest in our house before. Well, you know, since we bought this house, I thought you'd be happy if we made it more comfortable and increased our wealth with these kinds of charms. My husband answered, looking a little flustered and a little irritated. 
I didn't want to argue with him or make him angry by giving too much of my opinion. With me not questioning him, my husband didn't become more irritable and the situation calmed down. However, there were other things that worried me. After a while, my husband stopped buying Lucky Charms. But from then on, he started to treat me very kindly. My husband, who had hardly helped with household chores before, started helping me like a different person. Moreover, he started to pay more attention to me. Whoa! Dinner looks delicious. I bought this for you today. What do you think? Husband started buying my favorite sweets on his way back from work. His behavior changed to so much that I felt even sick. Then, I suddenly thought of the divorce consultations I had received in my counseling work, and a certain doubt came to my mind. Could my husband be cheating on me behind my back? My husband's behavior seemed to perfectly align with the actions of a husband who has concealing an affair, which was consistent with what I had heard during my counseling sessions. And at times like this, a woman's intuition undoubtedly works. While feeling a sense of anxiety bordering on certainty, I hired a private detective to monitor my husband's behavior. The results arrived at my doorstep within a few weeks, and they were just as I had expected. It turned out that my husband was consistently visiting a woman named Nina, who was famous as a beautiful fortune teller. Moreover, the report revealed that he was having an affair with Nina, in addition to receiving her feng shui fortune telling. All the feng shui goods in our house were things he had bought at Nina's urging, and the amount spending on them was several thousand dollars, as far as I could tell. No way! He spent that much money on these things? And he even used our savings that we worked so hard to save up for a future family car and our children's needs. This is such a ridiculous way to use our money. I'm in shock. And then, to make things worse, another shocking fact was revealed. I started the messaging app on my husband's phone while he was sleeping to gather evidence of his affair. To my surprise, I found out that Nina had been coaxing my husband to steal my savings. There was a plan to use a dubious substance called holy water that apparently makes people do whatever she wants them to do. She even wrote that it costs $900 for one bottle. It seems like she was planning on making me drink it and get me to agree to give my savings to my husband. And foolishly, my husband believed in Nina entirely and didn't see anything wrong with it. I want to cut tie with Paige as soon as possible and live with you, Nina just the two of us. I found a message like that and shivered. My husband, who had been completely indifferent to household matters until then, suddenly started helping out with chores and buying things I liked on his way home from work. It was all because Nina had instructed him to do so, to smoothly carry out their plan. I felt anger rising inside me at how foolish my husband was. I had worked so hard for a future life together, and he was secretly considering something like this. I would never let them get what they wanted. If they did something to me, 
I would just do it back to them. From then on, I rushed around collecting evidence for my revenge. I saved screenshots of the messages, of course, but also hidden bugs and small surveillance cameras that Nina had secretly placed around our house using in her lucky charms. It seems that Nina had been using information from these bugs and cameras to make my foolish husband trust her. To keep my husband off guard, I pretended that everything was normal and continued our daily life, leaving the bugs and cameras where they were. Of course, I also investigated Nina herself, a fortune teller who, who didn't seem like an ordinary woman. Alongside my investigation into the infidelity, I continued to investigate her identity. Under Nina's guidance, my husband planned to separate from me all these days. Now that I knew the truth, I decided to take advantage of my husband's willingness to help and continued to act like a good wife until the day of the plan's execution. Honey, it seems like a new cake shop has opened in the neighboring town. I want to try out. Oh, I can't seem to tidy up my closet. There are heavy things that won't go away. Hey, babe. I want to clean the exhaust fan, but I can't reach it. Every time, my husband happily helped me out saying, Sure, no worries. Let me do it for you. I took advantage of this act and used it to execute the plan. Finally, the day for the plan arrived. I was honestly excited when I found out the date through his exchanges of messages with Nina. As planned, my husband brought my favorite brownies on his way home from work. Hey Paige, you liked brownies, right? I heard about this famous long-established shop, so I bought some. Wow, thank you. I'm so happy you're remembering my favorite. Although I thought it was a bit forced, I showed more joy than usual f for my husband's souvenir. Of course I remember. I also bought some tea and mineral water, recommended by the shop manager. It goes well with the brownies, they said. My husband takes out the planned items from his shopping bag with a proud look on his face. Oh, so this is the so-called holy water, huh? I can't believe he actually wants to make me drink such a suspicious thing. He really doesn't care about me anymore. I watched my husband with a half-dumbfounded smile as he eagerly helped dinner prep. Seeing my foolish husband excited to carry out his silly plan made me realize that my remaining feelings for him had disappeared. And after dinner, my husband's eyes were filled with expectations and nervousness as I prepared brownies and tea for dessert. Of course I will enjoy the brownies, but there is no way I will just obediently drink the tea. While my husband was taking a shower, I secretly switched the suspicious portion with a different bottle. Unaware of this, my husband washed intently as I drank the tea. Alright, it's show time. I have to do my best. I set action to myself in my mind and began my plan. It... it hurts. I held my chest and rolled around on the floor. Then I exaggerated my suffering and pretended to faint with my eyes open. My husband turned pale when he saw me like that. p, -p, -p page What's wrong? Oh no. This is different from what Nina told me. 
this wasn't supposed to happen? My husband started to panic in a ridiculous way. But he quickly left the house without checking on my condition. What a hopeless idiot. I martyred to myself. And once I confirmed that my husband was gone, I immediately called the police. I had more than enough evidence, including bugs and cameras I found in the charms, a video of our conversation at today's dinner, and the holy water that he planned to drug me. These became evidence and my husband and Nina were arrested soon after. I also had screenshots of his messages with Dina, so they couldn't deny anything. I decided to divorce and demand compensation based on this evidence. Of course, I had already added the amount of money that my husband had embezzled. And later, I found out that Nina was not only a fake fortune teller, but also a marriage swindler who had deceived many men. Moreover, the face that my husband was infatuated with was all obtained through plastic surgery. When my husband was shown her pre-surgery face during the interrogation, he shouted, It's a fraud. How say you, Nina? He made the detective in charge bewildered. I even felt pity for him being such a loser. Since I started earning more money through my counseling job than my main job after divorcing my husband, I quit my job at the company. I planned to sell the house where I used to live with him, as it's just a reminder of our memories. With the money from selling the house, I will start preparing for my new life. I'm looking forward to having a luxurious new house with the generous amount of compensation I'll receive from my ex-husband and Nina. I don't know if love or marriage will come to my life again, but I don't want to live a life belittle others, no matter what happens. Although my ex-husband caused me pain, I am now happier than before. Today. I will face forward and live my life for myself and for my clients who are struggling with their own problems.